We had someone on Twitter, mm -hmm. I'm not even sure who it was, when we put out there that we would be interviewing with someone who produces reality shows and, and, and writes right. them. Um, and this person wrote back, quote, why did you sell out and decide to produce more garbage when there's so many great shows that need to be made? But if the audience is telling you that they want to watch some of this stuff, why do we interpret it as garbage? Okay. Here's my answer to that. Reality television, when people are talking about reality television that they perceive to be garbage, they are looking at very specific types of reality television. They are not looking at Anthony Bourdain. They are not looking at Dirty Jobs. They are not looking at shows that are interesting or informative or inspirational or and reality is much bigger than docu-series, docu-soaps, and that's all that anybody's talking about when they're talking about producing garbage. Docu-series, docu-soaps, if you take a look back into the earliest days of television, television from you know the 1940s into the early 1950s was still very experimental. People were putting plays on television and just shooting them as if they were plays. They were doing all kinds of crazy things and trying to find their footing and trying to find what worked on television. Docu-series docu-soaps have not been around that long, and if you look at it, if we started docu-series docu-soaps, you know, even in the 90s, um, we're still learning, and there's going to be a lot of product that's not that great. And I would defy anyone who talks about reality television uniformly as garbage to show me 100% of the scripted shows that have gone to air and not identify absolute crap amongst those shows that have aired. Any creative endeavor is very, very hit or miss. There are going to be hits, there are going to be failures, there are going to be shows that catch people's interest and shows that don't. And to claim that reality television is just producing garbage is an extraordinarily narrow view. And while I wouldn't want to take that person on and just call them an antagonist, I would urge them to start watching some more of the things that are on discovery, on history, um, watching Anthony Bourdain's shows, watching An Idiot Abroad, which is one of the best shows I've seen on television in years, and just really kind of broadening what their definition of, their understanding of what reality really is. Do you think then people envision it's sort of the, the cat fights amongst the women or, or the, some of the backbiting that they see and, and right. that as being well, what I'll, all reality TV is? I'll tell you, there's a, this is a great example, is I have, I'm aware of a series that I won't name the series ran, I think, 14 episodes in a season. There were two on-camera physical altercations over the course of the full season, um, which were not full-on fists. It was just sort of, you know, someone... It was like flipping a table over or like throwing a drink at someone. Um, all that anybody talked about the whole season were those huge explosive moments. I do think that people, when they think of reality television, again, because the more sensational stuff is what grabs headlines, they tend to think of reality in terms of those cat fights um, because that's what the networks are choosing to push in the promos. That's what's getting people to watch. It's the loud thing that's going to bring you in. I can go back to when I was much younger and watching TV shows like Dynasty and here, you know, here's Joan Collins and Linda Evans wrestling each other into a fountain. And nobody seems to mind if it happens in scripted. Um, but if it happens in an unscripted program, that's just totally unacceptable. Right. Um, reality TV is much broader than just, you know, people clawing at each other. Right. I think I saw that episode, by the way. Yeah. yeah well. <laughs>